good morning, everybody. Um, well, it's a pleasure to uh, see so many of you here. Uh, very uh, distinguished uh, guests, uh, uh, even people from abroad. Uh, but also to see uh, so many uh, students at this conference. Uh, we always have to uh, uh, look forward towards the future and, uh, and think about the future generation. And so it's really, uh, I think, uh, uh, I'm really, really glad that we have a uh, very large uh, student participation at the Fiber uh, Conference. I, I would like to make a few comments as opening remarks. Uh, I guess uh, all of you know that uh, Fiber stands for uh, uh, Forest Innovation by Research in Education. And, uh, and that we are an, um, a network of networks which uh, combines uh, eight uh, networks in forest innovation under a single uh, umbrella. Uh, also, I want to uh, emphasize again that the E in fiber is very important. It stands for education. And, and that's again why I'm so happy that we have a large uh, participation of students at this uh, symposium. Um, we have a large number of uh, participating universities, uh, 29 by last count, uh, all over Canada, and uh, they, they stretch all the way from, uh, from east uh, to west, and I think uh, we really uh, um, represent uh, most of, of uh, the Canadian uh, forest innovation uh, research at universities. Uh, obviously, it's always important to acknowledge our partners, and uh, so uh, NRCAN, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that the Assistant Deputy Minister of NRCAN, uh, Tom Rosser, is here with us. Uh, the um, um, uh, FP Innovations and, and the CEO of FP Innovations, Pierre Lapointe, is with us as well. FPAC uh, and uh, Catherine Copton, the, the Vice uh, President of FPAC, the For For Forest, Product Association, Forest Products uh, Association of Canada. And... Uh, uh, and I guess also uh, PAPTEC is here as well. We, uh, we have been uh, working with them on PAPTEC Day and again they're uh, working with us here on publicizing this event. Um, we have a vision which was uh, formulated by, uh, in a strategic workshop and it's very much uh, aligned with the uh, Vision 2020 of uh, FPEC. Uh, which deals with the um, uh, people, products, and uh, performance. And so we have uh, an, a vision which is, uh, accompanies that vision, um, but it's based on uh, what universities can do to uh, advance the agenda. And so we are a university-led network, but we very much collaborate with uh, our partners, uh, which I, I mentioned before. Uh, we already have had uh, many events and I think uh, together we're really uh, making history. We've had, uh, as I mentioned, a strategic workshop. We have had uh, re two regional workshops, uh, one in Quebec City, uh, one in Edmonton. Um, all, all of their uh, uh, networks have had workshops uh, and some of them were collaborative. For instance, uh, uh, in the Green Fiber Network, we, have um, in, we had invited uh, LignoWorks and Bioconversion. Uh, to our network and had a joint poster session and so we're starting to create uh, synergies among these uh, among these networks and here you see some of the uh, uh, events uh, which have been taking place and uh, the people who have been uh, participating in these events and and uh, we continue that uh, tradition uh, today and and the rest of this week Uh, we all know that uh, Canada has lots of forest. We are really blessed with uh, over 500 million hectares of forest in, uh, in Canada. And, uh, and it's important to, to have a, a way of, of dealing with these uh, resources in a, in a rational way. And so um, what I call the, uh, the one billion dollar question, or maybe the multi-billion dollar question, is uh, how do we derive uh, f uh, in a sustainable manner a value from the Canadian forest for the benefits of Canadians? I think that's why we're all here. Uh, how can we, uh, in, an, in, an, uh, in the best way of making use of, uh, of our forest, and uh, what fiber is concerned, how can universities help in, in achieving uh, these, uh, these objectives? 
so I think it's well established that the, the old model is really not uh, uh, economically viable if we just stick with uh, wood, pulp and paper. Uh, the economic outlook is not that great and we really need uh, to derive more value from the forest biomass. And so new uses are, are essential. And, and this led to what we call uh, uh, transformative technologies. And uh, there are uh, uh, lots of uh, groups which are actively developing uh, new products and, and new ways of, of using the forest. And I mention here, uh, it's obviously the, the forest industry, uh, FP Innovations, Fiber, NRC. And there are lots of uh, organizations which are promoting uh, this, they're not actually doing research, but uh, they're, they're much involved in, in partnerships. Uh, this is the Natural Resources Canada, provincial governments, uh, FPAC, uh, the Partners Committee, uh, and, and also uh, PEPTEC. And, and there is a very close uh, collaboration and synergy between all these uh, organizations. Um, there are already a whole number of, uh, uh, of promising technologies uh, out there. Um, here's just a uh, an, an very uh, partial list of them. And, and uh, some of them are developed by uh, FP Innovations. Uh, some of them are developed by universities. And several are developed by uh, a collaboration between uh, universities and, and FP Innovations, which I think clearly, again, uh, shows the alignment and, and the partnerships we, uh, we have created. Um, but we're not there yet. Um, there's still uh, many uh, scientific and engineering barriers uh, uh, to, to get these uh, products to the market. Uh, much more fundamental uh, research is, is needed. And I think if we uh, play our cards right, that means there is a very promising uh, future for R&D and forest innovation, and at the same time uh, for the uh, 400 students who are being trained in, uh, in fiber. Um, so um, student training, as I, is, as I mentioned, is a very important component in fiber, and, and we have a new initiative at this conference where we have a new uh, student award and I just want to introduce this. Uh, this is the uh, Otto Maas uh, uh, student uh, poster prizes. Uh, uh, there will be uh, three of them uh, of $1,500 and $500. Uh, they will be selected uh, uh, this week by uh, an, an, uh, about a dozen or more uh, judges and the announcement will be made on, on uh, Thursday. Uh, I might, there is a write-up in the booklet you have about Otto Maas. I just want to mention that he uh, also was the, uh, the, the director, actually the first director of uh, jointly the industry site and the university site of what was then called the uh, Canadian Pulp and Paper uh, Research Corporation, uh, which later became the Pulp and Paper Research Institute of Canada, which later became Peppercan, and which later was incorporated into FP Innovations. <laughs> And so uh, he is uh, one of the founders or directors of, of uh, the uh, pulp and paper industry in Canada. And I think it's very appropriate that the prize is uh, named after him. Um, so some of the successes which uh, I think Fiber already had in its uh, very uh, short history. Uh, Fiber was launched in November uh, 2011. Uh, so it's uh, really a very young organization and, uh, and I think we have already done an awful lot in, in establishing ourselves, uh, 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 brand marking the, the fiber name. Um, and uh, we have what we call uh, uh, 80 innovative ideas, which are concept disclosures, reports of inventions, um, patents, provisional patents, a uh, very large number of publications, a uh, large number of industrial partners and fair amount of uh, cash and in-kind raised from, uh, from industry. Um, I think a major event we had this year, which uh, uh, created lots of attention, was uh, a Fiber Day at the uh, annual PEPTEC meeting, uh, which are uh, held every year in Montreal, and a full day of them uh, was devoted to, uh, to Fiber. Um, uh, we have an, uh, an excellent uh, communication uh, strategy, I think, uh, and I think everybody who looks at the uh, the conference booklet uh, can see uh, how, uh, how professional uh, our services have become. And uh, we have had uh, two successful, what we call SNE applications. SNE stands for Supplemental Network Enhancement Initiative. 
uh, each network uh, in, can apply for such a grant, but uh, as Fiber, we have decided to do a single joint application uh, to uh, better create synergies among these uh, networks. Um, so the, uh, the latest uh, uh, SNE was uh, just recently approved for uh, um, uh, from, uh, starting uh, May this year to May next year. Um, and it creates uh, a, a number of activities which I've uh, summarized there, but they fall under uh, on the three headings. One is collaboration, one is uh, knowledge mobilization, and one is uh, enhanced uh, student training. And all of this uh, we do uh, within Fiber, and so uh, we're setting up a number of, of regional workshops uh, to create synergy among the networks. Uh, we have inter-network stages where students from one network can uh, work uh, in another network and, and, and is funding for that, uh, uh, another fiber conference. Uh, and then to accelerate knowledge uh, transfer, we have design projects, uh, a traveling roadshow where we're going to visit uh, specific industrial partners to, to see uh, how we can work together. Um, and enhanced student training. Uh, one, one of the proposals is for next year to have a, a large summer uh, a student summer school. Uh, so we're, hopefully we will attract some uh, 300 students uh, or more from, from Canada uh, to listen to uh, PIs giving presentations and presenting posters and, and having again an, an, um, a student workshop. Um, we have international stages, so if there are international collaborations, we have funding for sending students uh, abroad. Um, and a new initiative is, uh, um, you may know the uh, Marcus Wallenberg Prize uh, is, is awarded uh, every year uh, by the, uh, the King, and, uh, of King of Sweden in Stockholm. Uh, that's sometimes called the Nobel Prize in, in uh, forest products. And uh, we have made an arrangement that uh, Canadian students can uh, participate in, an, uh, student, in the student activities which are part of this uh, ceremony. And we will find a way of, uh, of selecting uh, five or six of the best students in fiber who will uh, be able to participate in the uh, festivities in, um, in Stockholm in, uh, in September this year. And so uh, precisely how we are going to do this uh, will be announced uh, later. And, uh, and then we want to uh, obviously strengthen our international collaboration. We already have uh, worked with uh, our, our Swedish colleagues and uh, uh, we, uh, we have been participating uh, with the US in Agenda 2020 and in um, uh, the International uh, uh, Research Management Committee and in Papira. And, and recently we are in contact with the European uh, organization COST, which have a large initiative in, in forest innovation as well. Uh, so I think uh, fiber is, is uh, one of the major players in, in uh, trying to integrate the, the forest industry in an emerging bioeconomy. I think this is where we eventually are, are heading and uh, this is an exciting area which gets students excited and I think uh, this is where our future uh, will be. Um, so. Uh, I think I, I, I want to keep stressing that we're just part of a, a one link in the whole innovation chain with our partners, with uh, FP Innovations, FPAC, uh, Anarchan, and CERC. Um, and so uh, our activities have brought us together here at the first uh, fiber uh, conference. And I think this is a major event. I think we are uh, making history uh, today. And uh, we have an, um, a special announcement, uh, so we're actually celebrating some, uh, uh, today, and you will hear it in a moment, some uh, uh, Canadian science and innovation, uh, which uh, will attract uh, worldwide uh, attention. Um, you've, uh, I just mentioned earlier the Marcus Wallenberg Prize, and, uh, and we have a representative of the Mark Wallenberg Prize Committee here uh, with us. And uh, shortly, uh, Professor uh, Rosen uh, will make an important uh, announcement, uh, which I think uh, uh, you will all uh, like to hear. So uh, this is really all I have to say. I want to thank our partners, our uh, networks, part of Sentinel, and uh, I want to uh, hope you will enjoy uh, the conference uh, this week. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> So now I call on uh, Professor uh, uh, 
Guy Rosen to, uh, to say a few words. <laughs> Thank you very much, Theo. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, friends, on behalf of the Marcus Wallenberg Foundation, Foundation and its chairman, Marcus Wallenberg, I want to thank the Fiber Network for generously offering us the possibility to give an announcement at this first conference. My name, as you heard, is Kai Rosen, and I have the privilege to serve as the Executive Secretary of the Marcus Wallenberg Foundation. The Marcus Wallenberg Prize is an international prize which was established in 1980 to acknowledge the lifetime activities and the memory of the old Marcus Wallenberg, and the late, who was the late chairman of Stura Kopaberg's Bergslags AB, now Stura Enso. Each year, the prize recognizes a single scientific achievement by one or a small group of scientists. In the view of the prize selection committee and its board <coughs> of the foundation, the selected breakthrough has had an impact or will have a potential to significant, significantly uh, affect the performance of the forest-based industries. While rewarding the winners, the prize also intends to stimulate further research around the world. This year, the prize will be given for the 30th time and the prize sum is two million Swedish crowns. I'm happy to be here in Canada today. Canada is the most significant country in the view of the prize. Very important contributions are on a regular basis being delivered in various functions of the prize. We are fortunate to have excellent connections to the Canadian forest-based industry and research community. But maybe even more important to the prize is the fact that Canada has, over the years, contributed to deliv by delivering many excellent nominations, resulting in six awards, including seven prize winners so far. By now, I guess you all have, conclude <coughs> you all have concluded that my reason to show up here is not to speak generally about the prize. But to add to the list of distinguished prize winners from Canada. I will get straight to the point by quoting from the motivation by the prize selection committee. A press release is being circulated at this very moment. The Marcus Wallenberg Foundation proudly announces that the 2013 Marcus Wallenberg Prize is awarded to Professor Derek Gray So, uh, I will continue to read from the motivation. <laughs> so, the prize is awarded to Professor uh, Derek Gray, McGill University, Canada, for his path-breaking research on nanocrystalline cellulose. The fundamental discovery of Professor Gray is that NCC can be transformed into solid films composed of chiral pneumatic structures with unique optical properties. This creates the potential for new wood and other lignocellulosis products uh, for different new unique value-added applications. This discovery has inspired research all over the world to, to, ident to intensify research on nanocellulose in general, thus opening for future business possibilities for the forest-based sector. You have now heard the motivation of the prize. 
please let me further explain the significance of Professor Gray's excellent achievement. Wood cellulose is composed of both crystalline and amorphous parts. The amorphous parts can be removed by strong acid hydrolysis, for example. And as a result, nanocrystalline cellulose is liberated. NCC consists of rigid, needle-like crystals uh, of cellulose chains, 3 to 10 nanometers uh, thick and 100 to 300 nanometers long. The liquid crystalline, crystalline beha behavior of hydrolyzed cellulose suspensions was first reported in 1951 by Bengt Rondby at Uppsala University, and subsequently in 1959 by Robert uh, Marchezo and his colleagues at McGill, where Derek Gray and the late Jean-Francois Revol continued to extract NCC from wood in 1992. The discovery of Gray and Revel was uh, the ability of NCC to form stable, uh, stable chiral pneumatic liquid crystalline phases at sufficient hi sufficiently high concentrations. Gray and Revel showed that simply by casting films from suspensions of cellulose crystallites, cellulose films with the optical properties of chiral pneumatic liquid crystal crystals was, could be prepared. The ordered structures have exceptional optical properties, being of the size of the wavelength of visible light. They can be modified and controlled by giving fascinating potentials for polarizing mirrors, lasers, optical security devices, and pigments, or films, showing different colors depending on the angle of the viewing. In fact, these already exist in nature in the brilliant irresident colors of the beetle exoskeletons. The fundamental findings were published and patented between 1992 and 1997. They strongly contributed to triggering widespread research into applications and uh, an explosion of publications from different groups, in particular after 2000, 2003 and 2004. The breakthrough intention of Gray has paved the way to exp exploit wood cellulose in several kinds of value-added applications. NCC has a very high specific surface area, making it an interesting raw material for different porous materials, but also for nanofiber reinforcements in composites through modifications with surface active groups to make them compatible with the surrounding matrix. These properties of NCC and the many forms in which it can be utilized, <coughs> utilized create a potential <coughs> for its use to enhance the properties of a wide range of products, including films in intelligent packing, pack packaging materials, switchable optical films, innovative coatings and filters for paper making, fiber reinforcements in composites, advanced building products, structural, structural and interior components for the transportation industry, biocomposites uh, for bone repair, activities for paints, pigments and inks, and for cosmetic products, just to mention a few. The list of possible applications is probably only hampered by imagination and shows the potential for future business concepts that can be realized by the forest-based sector alone or in cooperation with other sectors. The prize, as you heard, will be presented by His Majesty the King of Sweden at a ceremony in Stockholm on the 23rd of September this year. On September 24th, a symposium will be arranged in honor of the prize winner. The symposium and the prize winning research and its impact on the forest, forest products industry will be elaborated and discussed. And at this point, I would like to ask, I should have asked the laureate to come to stage, but that is already done. So one, why not give a hand? <laughs> Thank you very much.